What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overload here. We're going to be talking about a few different horror topics in this video here today. We'll be talking about Jay Wilde's upcoming horror film, her directorial debut, Halloween, Scream 7, Orphan 3, and Jeepers Creepers. So starting off here with Jay Wilde's new horror film, which again is her directorial debut. If you follow me on Twitter, then you know that I had the pleasure of watching this film a few days ago. And now that I think about it, it wasn't a pleasure at all. I just wanted to share a quick reaction on what I thought of this film. And yes, we're talking about that Jay Wilde, Jenny Farley from Jersey Shore. So I am not happy to say that this is quite lackluster for a directorial debut. The screenplay is the biggest disservice, and I believe she worked on this by herself. I don't want to spoil much, but the marketing campaign is more compelling than the actual movie. The acting isn't always that good. Characters undercut the intended terror with these awkward moments of humor. There is one character in specific who is very stereotypical. He is so annoying because he is always undermining the sequences that should be eliciting or evoking some sort of terror with these ill-timed humor bits and it's like why are we doing this the, like i said the acting isn't always that great one actor in particular who's being interrogated like as it's like an overlapping narrative with them being interrogated they're the strongest performer in the film to me everyone else was kind of just eh it has a decent setup but it becomes this incoherent sequences of events thanks to the poor lighting choices and the eye rolling camera work featured throughout where you just cannot make out what is happening and if you can't make out what is happening how can the film be scary so it's just like it, it, it doesn't work i see potential for her there were some glimpses of hope for something great to be achieved here but it just wasn't that and i don't think it's worth doing a separate video on so i just want to share my quick thoughts on devin devin is supposed to be coming to screen box sometime next week if not this week but be on the lookout for that now let's talk about Halloween. So Jamie Lee Curtis, if you saw my video on this, it was a full length video. I'll leave a link to it at the end of this video as one of the options to click on to watch next. She gave comments on a potential return to the franchise. I myself interpreted it as her saying goodbye to the character, but it's caused a lot of conversation. She said this to Entertainment Weekly. She said, I have hung up my bell bottoms and my pale blue button down shirt and I have relinquished Lori to the ages with a warm aloha and a thanks for the years and memories. And yet, if I've learned anything in my 65 years on the planet, it's never say never goodbye. It's the never say never that struck a lot of people as saying, mm, let me read between the lines. She's saying she's going to be involved in some capacity with whatever it is we get next. We know we have a TV show on the way. And I don't think that Laurie Strode, Jamie Lee Curtis's iteration, is going to be featured in this show unless the show delves into old timelines and wants to do something like maybe a direct sequel to H2O or maybe a sequel to Resurrection, something like that. I don't want to see another new timeline with this woman and this character. I love her as an actress, but it's time for us to say goodbye to Lori. You know, like I stated in the comment section to one of you in my full length video about the topic, sometimes as, mon as many times as you wipe your ass, you're gonna stank. And some of you are just not satisfied at any point in time when it comes to Lori Strode's ending. I thought that it was fine how it ended in Halloween Ends. I'm not saying the overall film was good, but it also wasn't that bad as I thought it would be. Now, yes, people favor her H2O ending, but then, of course, there's some people who don't even like that film. Some people don't favor how it was ended in Resurrection for obvious reasons. So it's just like if you can never make anyone happy, that doesn't mean you need to keep on swinging your bat. Like I stated, you can wipe your ass as many times as you want. Sometimes that shit is just going to stank. The ending of Lori Strode to some people stunk, and I think we should just accept that. For other people, it worked. We don't need to come back and redo this at all whatsoever. Now, let's talk about Scream 7. Scream 7, in regards to Matthew Lillard, he had this to say about the upcoming film to Games Radar in regards to Kevin Williamson being at the helm. He said, I think it's in, good, in a good place. I think that the movie being back in the hands of Kevin Williamson is great. I love what Tyler and Matt Radio Silence were doing before, nothing against them. And in fact, I thought they were taking a really exciting way or taking it in a really exciting way. He did have some comments about Scream 6, about it being too violent. And of course, people like myself and others scoffed because we've seen violence all throughout this franchise. He could have been meaning something else, but Scream has been too violent for some since the opening sequence in the original in which drew barrymore was left hanging with her guts hanging out <laughs> from a tree so this sentiment is similar to fans who trust kevin has learned a lot over the years since his directorial debut and won't give us a disastrous directing job this time around now that he's back directing the film all these years later with scream 7 
I do also trust he will deliver something special, but I don't want to get so overconfident in this or comfortable in that thought just in case Scream 7 is a shit stain and a complete slap in the face to the franchise. David Arquette recently gave an interview to this news network called Wave or something like that, I believe. He said anything is possible in regards to a potential Scream 7 return because it's a slasher film. Now, I will say this. Anything is possible, yes, but that doesn't mean we should be exploring it. Although, like I've stated before, I would be fine if we got Dewey flashbacks with Gail reminiscing on her time with Dewey in New York before he left. Maybe we get a flashback of the night Dewey left in his thought process before he got up and left. It like, Because like he mentioned in Screen 5, he left in the middle of the night because he couldn't hack it. I would love to see some sort of flashback like that to get David back in the role of Dewey Riley. But bringing him back to life? No, it's unnecessary. A lot of people will knock six for not taking risk, but then want to undo a risk taken in five. And then it's like, well, how can you knock six for not taking risk, but you want to jump to the movie prior and eliminate that risk? The math ain't mathing. <laughs> now, let's talk about Orphan 3. So, Variety and other reputable trades put out this report that the third film in the cult orphan horror franchise has been officially greenlit with Isabel Furman recently seen in Kevin Costner's Horizon returning to play her iconic role of Esther and Orphan First Kills writer David Coggeshell and director William Brent Bell who directed The Boy also back behind the camera. The feature of which plot details are currently being kept under wraps was announced by production banner Dark Castle Entertainment when Lionsgate set to launch the project at the American film market this week. Dark Castle is excited to announce another terrifying chapter in the Orphan Saga, said Norman Golighty, co-CEO of Dark Castle Entertainment. With the past success of the first two movies and another thrilling storyline, we are confident that Orphan 3 will be a must-see movie for both current fans of the franchise and new fans alike. Now, this was first originally announced to be in development late last year, I think, or earlier this year, so it's nice to know it's moving forward. I will say this, though. The only thing I see coming from this is a sequel because the last one was a prequel and I think what they're going to do is a narrative in which they never recovered Esther's body or that's not even her real name. Lena? Yeah, well, I don't remember. I'm going to call her Esther. They're probably going to go with a narrative in which they didn't find Esther's body at the end of the original film and many years later will be the timeline jump of this narrative. They'll try to bring Vera Farmiga back or they'll do something else in which it's set years later. They don't have Vera back and they have Esther just on the run. Maybe that's the narrative we see. And she tries to take up shop in another location where they don't know about her. And we're all in on the gag. But everyone else, as far as the newbies, will be let in on it when all the madness unfolds as she's still pretending to be this cute, innocent little girl. I will say Orphan First Kill while I thought it was inferior to the original, I rewatched it recently and it wasn't as bad as I remembered it being, but it, it still wasn't great. It, it wasn't great at all. It just was eh. something about that first one. You just can't replicate certain narratives. You can't replicate the magic of certain narratives. We're already in on the fact that this is an adult and she's not a little girl. So you have to be careful with how you keep your audience just mendering around in these scenes wandering around in these scenes i should say with characters we're waiting to catch on to it because we're already 10 to 20 steps ahead of them you have to be real careful with that because it could get frustrating to watch everyone be so dumb when you know what's going on so hopefully they come up with something that just lets the cat out of the bag early on and we don't have to sit there and wait for people to learn this secret of esther's like we did with orphan first kill but we'll see what comes of this now let's talk about jeepers creepers so these jive ass motherfuckers <laughs> behind Jeepers Creepers Reborn put this post up on the official page saying horror fans were buzzing. Jeepers Creepers Reborn brought back the creeper in a reboot that split fans. Some were thrilled to see the iconic creature return, especially in a fresh setting, a horror festival in Louisiana where a whole new group of victims faced the creeper's terror. Directed by Timo Varensola, who we know is not planning to return for five. The film followed Lane who after arriving at the festival began experiencing visions linked to the creeper, which should have been a fun getaway with her boyfriend Chase, turned into a deadly showdown. Reactions were mixed. Longtime fans appreciated the attempt to revive the franchise, but others felt it missed the original's dark, suspenseful atmosphere. Still, some loved the festival setting and Creeper's new look. Did it live up to your expectations or did it fall short? 
Now, the post was quite offensive to some. And it was offensive because many of you, myself included, looked at this and thought, you guys have to be trolling. Who, and how was this mixed? I think it was very clear cut that people thought this film was shit. They thought it deserved to be abolished. They thought it deserved to be banished to the depths of hell in which it came out of. And they wanted all of you, well, I'll just say me, I was advocating for this and all of you who watched my review were in agreement you guys needed to go one-on-one -on -one with The Undertaker, Teddy Long style, because that was atrocious. I don't know what they're getting at with this post other than just trolling us, but then there is possibly that chance because it's interesting that this account is active two years later. Are they about to announce a new Jeepers Creepers film once everything is settled with this trial? Because like I stated, that's supposed to run out in January of next year unless it gets pushed out again, but there's a possible chance that this account is active because they hopefully hopefully are going to get their crap together and we're going to get a proper jeepers creepers film announced once the trial is resolved and you're going to get jonathan breck back gina phillips and a competent writer and whatever else is necessary to eliminate and make up for all of the bad job that came with jeepers creepers 4 but you guys can let me know what you think about this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe. Turn on post notifications. You can never miss a video. In the description, I have links to all of my social media accounts. I am on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course. Let me know if there are any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.